Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm hanging out with my guy Al here, the Marine Toad. You know, these guys are so cute, right? I mean, you look at them and look at that adorable face, those eyes, absolutely amazing. Believe it or not, these guys can be killers. What do you say we push our problems aside, learn a little bit about cane toads, not to mention we got a lot of other stuff going on today. Before we get into all our snake work, because we have a lot of that type of stuff, babies, eh, you know, all that type of stuff going on, I wanted to talk about these little monkeys because it's kind of an interesting story, to be honest with you. You think of toads as just so cute and adorable, but the truth is cane toads, sometimes called marine toads as well, which are typically native to the southwest part of America, all the way down into Central and South America. But the fact is, is that these guys have devastated Australia. You think like, well, how could that possibly have happened? Well, you know, sometimes the powers that be make decisions that aren't always the best. Down in the dungeon, egg time, and we have a pastel female here that's actually bred to a calico pin yellow belly. We're looking for those lemon blast calico yellow bellies. We missed on the first clutch that we cut. I think we have a couple more clutches, and then this is the last one for the year. This girl looks like she's around a good clutch of eggs, and I just gotta be careful not to get bit by her. It's okay, baby. It's all right. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Do see one little slugger in there, and that happens. Let's see if we got a loose egg right here. We'll get this little slugger out right here, and then we'll try to unwind this girl. Oh, she's gonna bite me, isn't she? Oh, she sure is. Whoop! Oh, oh, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Whoop! Oh, come on. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Oh, boy, she really did protect those eggs like fierce. I tell you what. Oh. Try to get these out of here real quick. Gonna definitely need to candle a couple eggs because she was definitely feisty. It's okay, mom. It's all right, let's go. Just get these eggs over here. Get these last two eggs over here too. Slug drop, mama, you did so good. I tell you, what a good animal. I'm gonna miss collecting eggs. Uh, I think we have about 20 clutches to go, if I'm not mistaken. We've got two, four, six, eight, nine beautiful eggs. One little slugger, we'll feed that off to one of the monitor lizards. And again, hopefully in 57 days, we'll have that lemon bless calico yellow belly. I'm telling you, when you guys see these, they are absolutely ridiculous. For those of you that don't know, Australia had a huge cane sugar industry, right? Well, the problem is there's a little beetle called a cane beetle that eats the actual plants but more importantly eats the root of the sugar cane so the powers that be thought hey guess what we need something that eats the cane beetle what eats a cane beetle a cane toad that's right these guys love cane beetles there's no doubt about it so in 1935 through 1936 they released about hundred and two animals that's it hundred and two of these guys into Australia into the northern Queensland in the Cairns area and they basically thought like hey this is gonna take care of our problem protect our crops and all that type of stuff well guess what happened Number one, they didn't eat the cane beetles because a lot of the cane beetles actually were at the top of the plants and these guys obviously stay on the ground and they didn't eat enough of them to eradicate the problem. But in the meantime, these guys proliferated like crazy and kind of started devastating the wild all across Australia. <laughs> Since 1935, they went from 102 original animals to a couple hundred million cane toads around all of Australia. Now you might think like, oh, they're so cute, who cares? There's a bunch of toads, right? Well, the problem is, is number one, these guys eat everything. As you can see, they literally will eat anything that they get in their mouth. They'll eat snakes, they'll eat lizards, but more importantly, believe it or not, they have these huge scent glands right here that have a poison in them, a toxin in them, and Australian animals didn't have any way to cope with that. So death adders and brown snakes and all kinds of other animals were eating these guys. The poison from the cane toads were actually killing off huge amounts. So there were huge, huge, vast areas of species of animals in Australia that were being devastated by these guys, and it's really a pretty horrific story. Story. They've been kind of marching their way across the entire continent now and uh, definitely a problem. Now interestingly enough, there has been some bright lights. Some of the animals actually have learned how they could potentially live with the cane toads. Take for instance the kookaburra. They love to eat cane toads, but what they'll do now is rather than eating them and getting that toxin in them and dying, they will literally get them and they'll smash them up against a tree getting all the poison out before they eat them. It's crazy how nature goes though. The truth is this cute little face right here absolutely is a killer in Australia. We've been hatching some amazing leopard geckos this year. Of course, Jessica's done an amazing job as always. This thing is super cool. It's just a really cool, bold, kind of weird pattern, jungly, azanthic, max snow. I mean, the thing is just awesome. So I figured I'd take a little time and just show you guys some of the highlights. Uh, again, there's hundreds and hundreds of them that have hatched out so far that are all amazing, but I'll show you guys a few of them because I know you guys love leopard geckos. This first one is super cool. It's actually a max snow eclipse. That max snow, of course, is awesome when it comes to 
to the color. It's kind of that white and black, but then that Eclipse really changes up the pattern, making it beautiful. This is a Super Raptor white and yellow. Now the Raptor, of course, is that Eclipse patternless albino, and then of course it's a Super Raptor on top of it, and a white and yellow. Who <laughs> dog, that thing is gorgeous. And speaking of gorgeous, this is a Sun Glow Het Eclipse white and yellow. Man, that is a beauty. That thing is on fire. I love the Murphy patternless stuff. Then you mix the Max Snow into it, turns out really cool, and then the white and yellow on top of it, I tell you what, that gecko rocks. Look at the pattern on this one right here. It's actually a tangerine stripe Het Eclipse. That Het Eclipse really changes up the pattern and the color on it. Of course, the Eclipse is an eye pigment, but it also changes kind of all the makeup of the animal, making a beautiful animal just like this. I love this project. It's a hyper melanistic Max Snow Eclipse. That's that dark gene that we're working on to produce some really beautiful dark animals. I love this. It's going to turn out so cool when it gets bigger. This is another one of the hyper melanistic projects, but it's a Max Snow Het Eclipse. So again, we're working on a lot of stuff and the results have turned out amazing. Look at this one. This is a white and yellow tangerine reverse stripe. Oh my gosh, that thing is on fire. You guys know that I'm not going to show a bunch of geckos without showing you a super snow. This is just a super snow and it's ridiculous. It's one of my favorite mutations of geckos. And then we're working on this particular line that I think is ridiculous. This is actually a Max Snow White and Yellow Possible Tremper Het Eclipse. But the fact is we're working on this reduction of pattern with it. So you have this predominantly white animal with black dotting on it. Oh my gosh. I hope this project takes it a long way. They are incredible. <laughs> Check out the pattern on this. It's actually a reverse strike possible IMG. We're working on a project that is an increasing melanin gene. This could be the key right here. So hopefully as this gets older, it's gonna be ridiculous. This thing is ridiculous too. This is a Max No Radar. Now the Radar is basically the Bell version of the Raptor, which of course is the Tremper version. And look at the glowing stripe on this little monkey right here. This is a Hypo Max No white and yellow Bell striped animal. Oh my God, that thing is cool. And then the last couple animals are hyper melanistic. Again, that same project, but this one is a Murphy's patternless. So the Murphy's patternless is a recessive mutation and that hyper melanistic just makes it super dark. And then lastly, of course, is a hyper melanistic super snow. Super snow is one of my favorite mutations of all time. You put that hyper melanistic into it, turning it really dark like this, that thing is ridiculous. So as you can see, we're just really starting to pack on the geckos and that's just a handful of geckos out of the hundreds we've already got hatched and a thousand more eggs or so that we have on the ground. So it's gonna be a really cool year and we're trying to refine our production now. Rather than just producing a lot of geckos, we're trying to produce like really amazing geckos. I couldn't be more happy. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to do some more updates on our baby geckos as they hatch. It's been a while since I fed the dart frogs on the vlog. You guys know that it's a daily routine that I used to love to do. And since we're talking about frogs today, why don't we go ahead and feed these silly monkeys. Everyone knows that poison dart frogs frogs have poison in them. Of course, they don't have the poison that they have in the wild in captivity because they're just eating fruit flies like you're seeing right now. In the wild, they're gonna eat stuff with high folic acid like bullet ants, creating a higher toxin. But did you know that all frogs and toads actually do excrete some sort of poison? That's right, some are more toxic than others. Obviously, poison dart frogs can be a higher toxicity in the wild, whereas some of the most common things you might find in your backyard aren't that toxic. Believe it or not, there's a couple species of frogs in Brazil that are both poisonous and venomous. So they excrete a poison just like other frogs, but then they have these little barbs on them that can actually inject a venom. How crazy is that? Guess what time it is? And we only have one clutch really quick today, and this is actually a Nelson's that's head for albino that's bred to an albino. So let's go ahead and see what she's got going on. We'll get her cage all cleaned up, get her ready to go, and take a look and see what we got here. Looks like we've got two, four, five eggs, but you can see the glossiness on these eggs right here. This girl obviously tried to eat their eggs. You can see there's a little piercing here, and it looks like there's a little piercing there where this female decided that she was gonna try to eat her eggs, which is never good. Now, the good news is, is that they might actually seal up. So I'm gonna be very gentle, and I'm just gonna put them in here like that. And sometimes the actual albumin itself can act like glue, believe it or not, and it will glue that and heal it up, and uh, they should still hatch out okay. We'll keep an eye on these on the 
next few days and see what happens. But nevertheless, five eggs from a Nelson's bread to a albino. Half those should be albinos, obviously. So uh, running down a couple more clutches and we are done for the year with Colubri. <laughs> Holy moly, guys. I tell you what, we have had a heck of a Mosaic California King Steak here. We haven't produced Mosaic cows in probably three or four years. And now it seems like every other clutch that we hatch out is a Mosaic cow. Oh, look at this one right here. Ooh, this is cool. This is sometimes what we call the dot dash black and white cow kings because they just have like dots and dashes down their back. That is a cool looking snake there. And then we got a bunch of the really thick, almost like tire tracks ones. I mean, this is a really nice clutch of mosaics. Probably the prettiest clutch of mosaics that we've hatched out this year. Uh, I don't think we have that many more first clutches of mosaics, but we do still have some second clutches coming. So wow, it's been a good mosaic calcing year. Of course, this is the infamous Snoop Frog, the Argentine Horned Frog. Love these guys. And you know, again, you think of frogs, you think of cute and cuddly, and they are. They're absolutely adorable, but the truth is they're pretty savage animals. I mean, even Snoop Frog once ate a stillborn snake. I mean, these guys will eat pretty much anything in their path and when they eat they just thrash it around they crush it I mean these guys will literally devour anything that they can fit in their mouth I mentioned in the past that I won't cut every single clutch and sometimes it's just because they hatch a little earlier I cut at 57 days this clutch was at 56 days it was actually just a normal ball python that was bred to a banana spider and all the heads kind of pipped out so I just thought I would show you the clutch as is and not actually cut it you can see there's a banana here there's a banana here this banana hatched out this one right here looks like a little banana this looks like a banana this is definitely a banana that looks like i just trying to look really quick that looks like maybe a normal so out of this whole clutch there was two four six eight nine eggs looks like we have seven bananas don't know if they're banana spiders yet or normal bananas because they're still in the egg but i thought i would just show you the process of what a clutch looks like when i'm not cutting it you see all these little slits these little babies have an egg tooth right right at the tip of their nose there'll be a little bit of an egg tooth that actually slices up all these eggs just like we do with the razor blade right well this is what it looks like look at how many slices are in this egg right here. We got some bubbles coming out over here, bubbles coming out over there. Those are their first breaths. So I just think it's really cool to see the process. We don't have to cut every clutch to still enjoy babies hatching. Have a pretty cool Enchi clutch that just hatched out. This is actually a stinger breed to a pastel Enchi yellow belly and a bunch of really cool stuff. Got a little baby still in the egg right there, but this is actually a bumblebee super Enchi. We actually hatched one of these just a couple days ago. That was unbelievable as well, but this one might even be more reduced. I mean, wow, that thing is incredible. Then we have a little super enchi spider right here, a little enchi spider over here. Looks like just a spider and a pastel over here, and then a normal of all things. So the creme de la creme is this little monkey right here, this bumblebee, which is a pastel and a spider, and then of course the super enchi hoo doggy. I mean, look at the lack of pattern on the head, the reduction of pattern all over its body. That thing is unbelievable. I love hatching baby snakes. So I know you don't think of frogs as killers, but the truth is they can kind of be killers. I just had to tell that story because I thought it was amazing in my time down in Australia. It was wild to see how many of these cane toads are all over the place. It's really a tragedy and uh, it just shows us that invasive animals can be a problem. Obviously Burmese pythons and the Everglades and all of that type of stuff. Regardless, if you enjoyed this video, let's change topics here and go ahead and check out this playlist that has a bunch of baby snakes. I think that you'll enjoy that. Could you also do me a favor? Right up here you can subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking and we do it every Wednesday. On this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on please have an absolutely wonderful day guys remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow